Ladies and gentlemen, a new snapshot for Minecraft Java Edition 1.15 has been released. Here is 19W46A. As we're getting closer to the end of the development cycle for Minecraft 1.16, these snapshots now contain mostly bug fixes. But 19W46A also has a bunch of new advancements and some tweaks to eating in creative mode. My name is Sly Slime, I'm here to guide you through all of the changes in Minecraft Snapshot 19W46A. And let's start with those new advancements, shall we? These are three advancements related to bees and honey, and they are sticky situation for jumping into a honey block to break your fall. B are guest for safely collecting honey from a beehive using a campfire. And total bee location for moving a bee nest with three bees inside using silk touch. Those are not the only changes to bees, however, there are a whole bunch of bug fixes to bees. Here's a change though, bees now only exit through the front of a bee nest or bee hive. After leaving a bee nest or hive, the bees could take damage, that bug has been fixed in this version, and bees will now head back to their hive or nest to sleep during the rain. If you place a hive or a nest in the nether, then now bees can leave that nest, previously they would stay inside forever. If you harvest honey or honeycombs from a hive or a nest without using a campfire to sedate the bees, then they will now become angry even if they are just nearby the hive and not inside of it. Baby hostile bees didn't have an attacking animation that has been fixed in this version, and campfires under nests or hives will now properly calm bees in more situations when you have blocks between them but those blocks let the smoke through. That goes for instance with trapdoors and carpets. In other mob fixes, wandering traders will no longer sometimes run around like crazy with extreme speed for no apparent reason. And a change to spawning. If you have a spawn egg of any type of zombie, then right clicking that onto the same type of zombie will now create a baby of that type of zombie. This goes for zombies, for zombie villagers, for husks and for drowned. Let's talk about gameplay changes. Experience drops have changed in this version. Experience orbs will now appear at the same time and in the same location as the loot drops when an entity is killed. Previously the experience orbs would appear at the end of the death animation, which means that especially if you had strong knockback or the entity was moving quickly, then the experience would appear some distance away. This also fixes a bug where the experience would disappear from a player if the player died with the do immediate spawn game rule set to true, or if that player respawned very quickly. All food items are now edible in creative mode regardless of what your hunger level might have been before entering creative mode. And speaking of creative mode, if you break a beehive or a nest in creative mode and it had neither honey nor bees inside of it, then it will no longer drop as a block on the ground. There was a bug that meant falling blocks that landed on entities aligned to the grid would turn into blocks and then immediately turn back into falling blocks over and over again. This could cause various issues like anvils glitching out and making a terrible noise, as well as the ability to plant crops on top of sand that would repeatedly fall this way making the crops grow much faster. When saplings grew, they tried to grow on the highest block of that column, so if you had a sapling in a cave, then it would try to grow on the surface above that has been fixed in this version. If you had silk touch on a tool that broke and then kept breaking blocks with that hand, then the silk touch effect would keep applying, that has been fixed in this version. Furnace minecarts could be shoved away despite not using a fuel item from your hand that has been fixed in this version, together with that a bug where furnace minecarts would lose their status of being powered visually on the client. There are also another batch of fixes for hand animations and things happening incorrectly when clicked. That includes lit redstone ore not producing a burst of particles anymore and playing a redundant hand animation. There are also fixes for hand animations playing when they shouldn't play or not playing when they should play, in conjunction with placing a painting in a spot where it cannot exist, right clicking on an armor stand or item frame that is empty, making a tamed parrot sit or stand, trying to throw an eye of ender in a dimension where there is no stronghold, eating or drinking an item, clicking on a fully healed iron golem with an iron ingot, or attempting to put a saddle on a baby pig. 
Finally, for gameplay, a bug has been fixed where when a player dies, if they had something in their inventory, then the player model would get pushed in a random direction. That bug has been fixed and now only their loot will go in random directions. Let's talk about fixes and changes to world generation. The bonus chests could sometimes spawn in the air that has been fixed in this version, and savanna biomes have gone back to having as much grass as they had in previous versions. Giant spruce trees could occasionally generate in very very short versions that has been fixed in this version, and the leaves of acacia trees are back to generating like they did before. User interface fixes. The biome blend settings have moved. They are now found in a big button near the top of the video settings and they now have a description per level. Increasing the biome blend setting is more costly to your performance so unless you have a very good computer do not increase the setting. If you have performance problems with the rendering it is worth trying to reduce this setting. The labels for these settings are normal for 5x5, which is the default, and then fast for 3x3 or fastest for off. On the higher end of the scale, then 7x7 is called high, 9x9 is called very high, 11x11 is called extreme, 13x13 is called show off, and 15x15 is called maximum. Your setting value for the biome blend is now also showed in the debug overlay after a B. Note that this is the setting value itself and not the distance. So for instance the value 2 means 5x5 five five or normal and a value of 4 means 9x9 nine nine or very high. There's some user interface bug fixes as well. The item naming text field contents no longer renders above item tooltips in the anvil screen. A rendering issue has been fixed in the statistics menu and the word buy in damaged bulk by shield is now consistently capitalized. For visual fixes in this version, boats are no longer filled with water and the dragon fireball texture has been updated to match the new style of fire charges from the texture update. Stained glass, ice, slime blocks and other transparent block particles are once again transparent and so are experience orbs. Experience orbs are also correctly rotated now when using the third person camera from the front. The breaking animation on tinted block types has been fixed and is now correctly colored. Mob and player particles were offset that is fixed in this version and the fishing line is now curved once again. Finally, placing a chest next to a closing chest no longer cuts the animation in half. Technical fixes in this version, there was a bug with the command blocks that meant that it didn't show all of the errors correctly when typing a command into a command block interface. That has been fixed in this version and for instance it will show you an error if the last character of a command is a space. Some types of errors now also show more information when typed in the chat. The generic dot max health attribute now works for tamed wolves and the play sound command now uses the correct feedback message if it is applied to multiple targets. In terms of performance and stability, there are a number of crash fixes in this version, but also a fix for the game stalling for a long while if the render distance was changed above H chunks on certain systems, as well as performance improvements for, among other things, chunk saving, rendering, and light calculations. And finally, if you attempt to start the game without having the appropriate graphics driver installed, you will now get an error message window pop up instead of the game outright crashing. And those were all the changes in Minecraft Snapshot 19w46a. I encourage everybody to try this out, we are getting closer to the release of Minecraft 1.15 and so it is more and more important to find the bugs quickly at this point. If you do find bugs, please report them to the Minecraft issue tracker, there's a link to it in the video description. And if you want a guide on how to do that properly, I will link you to a video by Silent Whisperer on how to report a bug. Keep in mind if you do try this version that snapshots are experimental versions and if you upgrade a world to a snapshot it can never be downgraded to an earlier version again. So if you try this do so on a backup of your world or on a separate test world. Now if you want to try it but you don't know how to then click on the link on the video right now it'll take you to a tutorial video about how to get and play a Minecraft snapshot. And that was all from me for this time. I hope you found this update video useful and if you did please help me out in return, leave a like and share it with your friends. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest Minecraft news then please subscribe to my channel where I do update videos for every new snapshot, pre-release or release of Minecraft. My name is Slice Slime, thank you for watching, have a great day and I'll see you next time.